Right. I, I agree with you. Uh, I kind of have a, a similar question that kind of dovetails with that from uh, one of our forum members, uh, Acorn Sales. Uh, they say there's been a lot of articles on King World News from Stephen Lieb and other writers on the speculation of the of the world's money supply tied to $10,000 gold. Uh, and they say, I guess some of the some of this leads back to the new world order conspiracy theory with a global currency spin from Lindsay Williams, et cetera. If the powers that be were to head in this direction and peg a global currency to gold, how would you see it playing out? And then they've got two options here. Option one being a massive back bank holiday or option two, a 1933 style confiscation attempt. And uh, how would you prepare for it accordingly with your physical metals? Well, um, this is kind of a similar question. I would right. uh, let's let's work backwards from what you said at the end. Uh, you would prepare for this eventuality, and it really is um, a likelihood, an eventuality, by uh, protecting your wealth with gold and protecting your purchasing power uh, and your ability to buy everyday items with with silver. Um, you mentioned confiscation attempts. Look, I, you know, I, there's a whole bunch of opinion out there about whether that could happen, will happen. And I'm, I'm not one to try to say in one way or the other whether it would. I think from a practical nature, I think it would be almost impossible to enforce uh, confiscation. And maybe, maybe, and maybe that's impractical for me to say that. Because maybe, maybe the government mandates it and puts out a law that anybody tries to barter with silver or gold, or tries to exchange gold or silver for uh, other material goods, needs to be turned into the monetary police. I mean, who knows what kind of Orwellian state we'll end up in, but. Um, in the in the age of the internet and of instant global communication, I think it is highly unlikely that uh, an order, a law, can come down from on high that says, you know, you need to turn in all your gold, or you're going to be subject to prosecution. Um, you know, in 1933, they could go from town to town and just collect gold because nobody would know they were coming. I, you know, as, as soon as that was even discussed or mentioned uh, in today's world, the out uproar and the outcry would be such that I, I just don't think it's practical. But again, I mean, that's just me. Maybe um, maybe it will happen. Uh, in terms of a bank holiday if, with this currency reset, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you could see. I mean, I could certainly see that where uh, all of a sudden – the uh, U.S. is no longer the reserve currency, uh, and so the world breaks up into regional currencies, kind of like the euro, you know, kind of a, a Southeast Asian currency. And then, you know, there's been all this talk that has been brushed off as conspiracy for years about an Amero, uh, some combined Canadian-Mexican uh, uh, U.S. North American currency. I, you know. I can certainly see it happen where the dollar just becomes a part of a regional currency. And it would be simple to do. I mean, you just close the banks. Hell, maybe we wouldn't even have to close the bank for a day. All of a sudden, whatever you have is, to, you know, your bank statement one day is denominated in dollars. The next day, it's a different number denominated in, in uh, Amero or whatever it is. Um, so you, it could, I think it would be just as simple as that, all done digitally. Uh, all the way back at the beginning, you mentioned something about ten thousand dollar gold. I every time I've seen that number, it's a a relation, uh, a ratio, a relationship between the amount of ounces of gold that the United States supposedly owns, um, and supposedly allegedly owns, and the amount of U.S. debt uh, that is current, which is currently fifteen. Point two trillion dollars or something like that. And if you take the amount of ounces of gold that we allegedly have and you divide it into the $15.2 trillion, then you get 
10,000 or probably more dollars an ounce of gold. That's the number I've always seen. Oh, okay, it makes sense, but I don't think that's any kind of hard and fast formula um, as for what gold should ultimately trade at. Yeah, I agree. I think Mike Maloney has done some work uh, like you're talking about there. He's done, that guy done a lot of work and uh, deserves a lot of credit for leading the fight for as long as he has. Right. Um, do you have any faith that the general population is awake enough to demand and ensure that a fair and equitable system would evolve? <laughs> uh, no. How's that for an answer? Um, that's honest. Uh, I mean, that's what the side is about. I mean, to give a shameless plug to TF Metals report. Go for um, it. We're, we're, what I recognize after I started this blog and people actually showed up, which was a, astonishing to begin with, um, what I came to quickly figure out is there's not a, a wealth of unfiltered, objective information about metals and mining stocks and how to invest and protect yourself. Uh, there's a lot of um, biased um, a non-knowledgeable opinion out there um, that is not objective and can lead you astray. Um, and I thought, gosh, if we could create something of a like a wiki where all of the members of the site that contri can contribute what they know, and then the individual reader that shows up who's on his his or her computer late at night because they know something's wrong and they know they get, you know, just sticking in the money market or continuing with their stockbroker's plan of buying mutual funds just isn't getting them anywhere. And so they're banging around their computer trying to find some other source of information. They stumble across the site and they will find a wealth of information provided by people that are in the same boat as them. And having been in financial services for 20 years, I just know how that other side of that game works. If, if you started feeling having the itch to uh, that you wanted to diversify into gold or silver, and you're sitting across a desk from your your Morgan Stanley or your Merrill Lynch stockbroker, and you say, "I, you know, I really think we ought to get into some gold stocks." First, that stockbroker is going to, you know, roll his eyes at you like you're some kind of nut. Then they might patronize you by saying, "Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'll uh, look through my Trenenza here and." And it'll pull out a research report on Newmont Mining or some such uh, company that maybe his company, his brokerage firm, has an investment banking relationship with and thus has a buy rating on. You know, and then it'll say, here, well, read this. And then, uh, you know, maybe he'll patronize you by letting you buy a couple hundred shares. Um, that's that's the, mainly how people get their information <laughs> for investing in metals. And so at the site, we try to, um, like I said, try to educate people um, and do it in a very objective, objective way. So do I have faith um, that the general populace is awake enough? No, I don't. I mean, the, the education system in this country is a disaster. Uh, and if you ask people uh, basic questions about economics, they don't know. And frankly, that's OK. I mean, life's tough. I mean, I mean, the cost of living has has soared over the last thirty years. At the same time, taxes have doubled and tripled, and people have to work two jobs, and and both a mom and dad have to work just and try to put the kids in daycare and school and all this jazz. I mean, nobody has time. I mean, who has time to sit around and and educate themselves uh, to to be there to demand, uh, uh, as you said, a fair and an equitable system when when you're worried about just making your mortgage and how the hell are you going to put your kids to college and, and your parents, oh, my God, dad looks like he's getting Alzheimer's and, oh, crap, how are we going to put him in there? I mean, you got all this other crap you're worried about. You don't have time to worry about who the hell this guy Keynes was and how he screwed up. Everything. Well, not he didn't, but all the politicians did. So anyway, do I have faith? No. And that's that's probably my primary concern is then – Power then goes to the noisiest, you know, the people that that do at least know at least ahead of time the change is coming, um, and then they make the most noise. I mean, uh, gosh, not to sound uh, really diabolical and, and 
and goofy. But, you know, when Hitler was originally elected uh, chancellor in 32, it was just worth a simple plurality. I mean, it wasn't like there was 95 percent of the people voted for him. But you get in and you consolidate power and then it's off to the races. And with the type of changes that are coming um, and with the amount of uneducated and asleep people that are out there, uh, who knows what kind of leader and what kind of system we're going to get. Um it's definitely something I'm worried about. Yeah, I hear you. Me too. I uh, uh, just uh, uh, I, I can relate to your Merrill Lynch story. I used to be back in the day. I was a Merrill Lynch broker, and that's what they did was uh, hand you a report to to peddle stock. Yep. And um, and also uh, driving driving uh, traffic to sites like yours is uh, I think something all of us can do. So anyway, I appreciate Thank the you. answers, and uh, I'm going to swing it back over to McLaren. Oh, hold on, I have, I have. Can I ask questions from time to time? Sure. Is that legal? Acorn Sales. What, I, I, I just think that's such a great name. Is there anything behind that? <laughs> that's a question I can't answer. I, <laughs> I, I don't know the answer to that, but I agree with you. That is an interesting name. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Romans. And Turd, you know, if you swing over by the WebBot forum, you can find Acorn Sales there uh, right next to Pecan Sales and Walnut Sales. Oh, sweet. And you can ask him specifically what it was that got that name going for him. Um, I'm going to bring it back over onto the topic of metals because that's what we're here for today, not, not nut sales. Turd, returning to the topic of silver. As a monetary metal globally, realistically, silver's role came to an end in 1964. Beyond silver bugs, it's now mostly thought of or treated as an industrial metal. In Europe, there's roughly a 10% value-added tax on purchases that is not applied to gold, and which is in addition to any coinage or dealer markup premium. Barring a financial or economic collapse that would also destroy the industrial component of the demand equation, how and why would silver ever regain its monetary status compared to gold? <clears throat> well, if anything, um, well, there's a couple different components to, to answer that question. One, um, and it's where I was going to begin with, one, it's a denominational thing. Um, gold is... $1,743 an ounce. So it does not make it, um, in terms of everyday commerce, it does not make it a feasible bit of <laughs> of metal to carry around in your pocket. It's fun. You know, it's pretty cool. Have, hey, look at this. But it's not the type of thing you want to leave laying around or let fall between the cushions of the sofa. Um, so you need something that's denominated in a, in a smaller number. And silver is recognized as a precious metal and as money for thousands of years fits that role. Um, you mentioned 1964. I, uh, there's some really uh, interesting work being done uh, in Mexico uh, currently by a man by the name of Hugo Salinas Price. 